Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Sirach. Give to the Most High as he has given to you, and as generously as you can afford. For the Lord is the one who repays, and he will repay you sevenfold. Do not offer him a bribe, for he will not accept it, and do not rely on a dishonest sacrifice. For the Lord is the judge, and with him there is no partiality. He will not show partiality to the poor, but he will listen to the prayer of one who is wronged. He will not ignore the supplication of the orphan or the widow when she pours out her complaint. The word of the Lord. Reading from the 84th Psalm, let us read responsibly by half verse. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always praise you. Happy are the people whose strength, whose strength is in you. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. They will climb from height to height. A reading from the second letter to Timothy. I am already being poured out 
as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me from his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told his parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord.
Give to the Most High as he has given to you and as generously as you can afford. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. To be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Put on your seatbelts. We're going to talk stewardship today. <laughs> Normally, you see me up here uh, dressed in my white dress uh, with, a, with a stole, and I, I asked Father Eric if it would be okay if I not do that today. And there's a reason for that. The reason for that is, is that as I was preparing for this sermon, a realization came upon me, uh, which I'd like to share with you how I got there. In 1959, along with a class of 47 other 12-year-olds, I was confirmed by the then Bishop of Alaska, whose name was Bishop Gordon. They called him Flash Gordon because he had to fly around to get to the different places in Alaska where he would visit. And the following Sunday, I was uh, asked by the rector to become an acolyte an altar boy. There were no altar girls in those years. And for the rest of my time, from the seventh grade until the twelfth grade, I was in church every Sunday as an acolyte, the perpetual acolyte. And so I learned that what church was about as I was growing up was about doing stuff in the service. I learned how to be on this side of the altar. And with the exception of four years of hedonism called college, I continued in that general path uh, until 19, 2001. So for almost four, well, more than 40 years, for me, the understanding of what church was about was my doing something, my being the priest, my being on this side of the altar rail. In 2001, I left a congregation and went to work for the diocese, and then after that for a, a, a group of nursing homes, um, and finally came here. And other than the two years when I was priest in charge here, um, for the rest of the time, I began a transition to a very different vocation, a vocation I never understood. And that vocation was how to be a parishioner. You know what happens when, when, when you leave the priesthood Sunday by Sunday by Sunday, and I worked for the diocese. I was there to go see how congregations were doing. I'd go to a different church every week, and what I would do is I had this little mental checklist of all the things that they were doing wrong in that place. You know, the preacher was terrible. Uh, it, it took too long between the fraction and the distri distribution of communion. Uh, the guy who was ringing the bells rang it wrong. The choir hit a wrong note. I mean, all sorts of things in my head. And literally, for all of my career as a layperson sitting in the pew from 2001 on, that's how I did church. And, and the way that that made me feel good was then I would go during the week and meet with other clergy and tell them how bad the place was that I had just been. It was about critiquing. It was about my understanding that I understood how it should be done right, and the rest of them, not so much. And then I came here. And when I arrived here the second time, after my stint as priest in charge, I began to learn how to sit in a pew. I began to learn how to listen to a sermon. I began to learn how to appreciate what the choir was doing. And I more than began to learn how many people there were in this congregation who were doing ministry, who were doing things on my behalf. I mean, there's a way of thinking about this is that every Sunday there's a whole host of people who come to church before you get here to prepare the way for that church so that you can have a faithful experience. And for them, I feel incredible gratitude. So now, this year, this year, for the first time, 
rather than all of the ways that I used to approach how I'm going to give. You all did get one of these? Okay. Uh, if you've already handed it in, uh, Bob Fuchs has extra. I want you to add to whatever you gave by the time we're through. Okay. Because whatever you put in is not enough. All right. And, and I always had that attitude. I was singing for my supper as a priest because the salary that paid me came from the pledges of the people. I was getting my income from your income. But now that I'm sitting in the congregation, I don't get anything from your income. And that freed me up. So I began to think about it. OK, let's approach this thing rationally. There are three standards of giving in the Bible. Number one is the standard of the Old Testament, which is the tithe. That's 10% of your income before taxes. We can have that argument later, 10%. Number two is John the Baptist. John the Baptist said 50%. If you have two cloaks and your brother has none, give him one. Jesus said, go and sell all that you have, give to the poor, and follow me, 100%. So I decided to go with the Old Testament. It's a hell of a deal. I mean, you know, you, you get to keep 90% of what isn't yours. That's a good thing, okay? And I began to ask myself, well, why do people give? Well, they give because the church has a need to receive. The stewardship committee did a really good job. You all got this as well? Just generally nod, okay? To say, here's what the church needs and why we need it. And it's a good accounting and a, and a transparent one of where every dollar you give goes. And I said, OK, the church has a need. And this year, the need is that everybody increase their pledge by 13%. I didn't make that up. That's the stewardship committee. Working with the treasurer came up with that number. That will help us to meet this aspiration goal. So then I thought, OK, well, how much am I giving as a percent of my own income? How close am I to 10%? And I decided to do it for all of you as well. Because the internet's a wonderful thing. You can find all sorts of things on the internet. And as long as you're sure you're not reading one from China, you can find that's some interesting learnings, all right? What I learned was is that if you take all of the communities in this area, all of them, where we have people who live, so it's Oak Island and Bolivia and Leland and Southport and Boiling Springs and, and, and also you can find out what the median household income is for each of those areas. And there is a range from $30,071 in one community to $110,814 in another community. And if you take all those, add them up and take the average, it comes to $66,662. So if you're giving 10%, each of you should be given $6,666, which is the number of Satan. <laughs> so you can't say the devil made you do it if you're not given that. <laughs> what you can say is this. My assumption is, is that if you, you each know what it is that you earn, what your household income is, you know that, and it's either above or on or below that $66,000 number. That's what it is. You, it is what you, it is. Based on what we are currently giving, which if you want to find out what we're currently giving, it's in the back of the blue card, you can see that we are currently giving at less than 3.5%. Well, so the good news is the devil has made us not even in danger of tithing, not even in danger of that 10%. And then I thought about that, and I thought, OK, well, what about the benefit to me? There's something about the giver's need to give. You all know that because you are giving people and you give not only to the church but to other places and the reason you do that is because it makes you feel good. In fact, there's a science that says that there's a little whatever thing that goes off in your brain, it's the same thing that joggers have and smokers have, interestingly enough, that makes them feel good, okay? And that whatever, whatever it's called um, goes off because you give. 
So one of the reasons to give is to feel good. And then I remembered something else. I remembered that I am the member of a congregation. I'm a parishioner. And when I give, I'm not giving to the church as if the church was something else, some other organization. When I give, I'm giving to our community. And when you give time and talent as well as dollars, you're giving to a community, to the work of the people. And I see people here who I know are involved in all sorts of ministries of the church, and they do wonderful things, and then I had to remember in gratitude that they're doing that for me. Now, there's some benefit of that to you that they're doing it to me. For instance, you're glad I'm not in the choir. <laughs> I, I don't have that gift, and so I hum along, all right, but I let them give their gift, which they give when they sing for me. When, 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 when someone is doing outreach to the poor, I'm not there, I'm sitting at home doing something else. But they're doing that for me. And I began to understand that the important thing about giving is how well you feel connected to this body of people. The measure of your gift is the measure of your respect for this community. The measure of your giving is the measure of the amount of dollars you are willing to invest in us. And we will make it if everybody makes an investment. And if they don't, we won't. It's that simple. I, I want to end with a parable that I hope will make some sense to you. It's about a town in France, a little village in France that's known for its fabulous wine. And the mayor of that town has been mayor for 50 years, and he announces to the town council that he's going to retire. And so the town council people meet secretly with the mayor not present and decide they're going to give the mayor a gift for 50 years of service. They're going to give him something of themselves. And so they put a big oak cask in the town square. And on the day of the retirement party, everybody can be seen each bringing a carafe of their wine to put in that barrel. So the gift of the town will be the collective gift of the community of their own making, of their fabulous wine. And so the day comes for the retirement party, and there's a band, and people make speeches, and, and everybody. And finally, the new mayor stands up and asks the old mayor to come forward and says to him, we have collected a gift for you. This is the collection of all of our wine. And we give you this barrel of wine. And a glass is brought forward, and he dips the glass into the barrel, and he drinks. And the crowd's watching. And the mayor's face falls, because all he's tasting is water. He's tasting water because every person in that community said, well, this is a rich community. There's lots of people with a lot more, so we'll let them give the wine, and no one will miss that I just put in a thing of water. The question is, when you fill this out, will you be giving wine or water? Amen.
Standing together, let us declare our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk, walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us exchange a sign of peace with one another. As you're finding your seats, we have several announcements that I want to pass along. If you're visiting with us today, I invite you to fill out a, a visitor's card and place it in the collection box or hand it to one of the clergy as, uh, as service ends and you're departing. In your bulletin was one of these. This is about a walk for those who are in need in our community, whether it's groceries and food or utilities and other such needs. It's taking place today. We're starting in Franklin Square Park. 
please get there between 1.30 and 2. We're starting at 2 with prayers. You can consider it kind of a little mini Camino to help your community. Uh, and if it's raining, you can consider it a mini Camino and come and help and walk, and you will still do well. In other words, I think it's happening whether it rains or not. In the green sheet, there's lots of things that are going on. Most importantly that I would draw your attention to is twofold. One is vestry candidates, and the other is diocesan, uh, our delegates to diocesan convention. Both of those are described in the green sheet, and we are taking nominations at this time to ensure that we can fill all our positions. We have enough candidates running, and that way we can gather from them some materials and some biographies so that you will be more informed when it comes time to vote at the annual meeting in December. Coffee hour is following the service taking place in the parish hall. You are welcome to come. You're encouraged to come. And if you are a board chair or a vestry member, we invite you to stand at this time. And those of you who are remaining seated, you may look around and see your vestry and your ministry board chairs. Those are the folks that you are invited to give thanks to, to give your appreciation to to offer your comments, your compliments, your concerns, your questions. They are happy to interact with you and help you in any way they can. Thank you, you may be seated. We'll be gone. We'll be gone. The clergy are leaving tomorrow about noon. We are departing for the annual clergy conference which takes place every year. Uh, right about this time of year, all the clergy of the diocese are gathering at Trinity Center which is about two and a half hours that way, north, is that north? I think that's north. And we will return late Wednesday afternoon. If there is an emergency requiring clerical presence, contact us and one of us will get back here to be with you should that need arise. You're still not alone, even though we are two and a half hours up in some place that way. So we have a ministry minute. Dennis, if you would like to come forward and share with us about the worship board. Good morning, everyone. I'm talk to you this morning about the worship board ministry. My name, my name is Dennis Courtney, and I'm the deputy chairman of the worship board and also the usher captain. Standing in this morning for our board chairman, Ricky Evans, who returned from vacation with COVID, so he's in quarantine with his wife, Deb. Uh, Ricky is also our church verger and routinely serves as a Eucharistic minister and does lots of other things for us. The worship board's mission statement is as follows. Grounded in God's word and love for all, we offer meaningful worship in a space in the, in the liturgical tradition of the Episcopal Church. Our central focus is to make the worship experience meaningful for everyone and to facilitate the smooth flow of our services. When I identify what groups comprise the worship board, our mission statement and focus certainly will make sense. First of all, and not least, the, the clergy. Father Eric Mills, Mother Lisa Deacon Pam attend all of our meetings, and we are very lucky to have such wonderful people ministering to us. The choir, as you see this morning, is represented by our organist and music director, Debbie Skillman. In addition to all their time and talent in rehearsing, they spend a lot of time providing wonderful music to us every Sunday. The altar guild is represented by Janet Wester, who is responsible for, parent, for preparing our altar services to include the altar cloths and maintains our beautiful vessels used during the Eucharist. Our flower guild, represented by Jan Fairley. And as you can see every Sunday, we have more than beautiful flowers representing their, their work. Our church administrator and scheduler, Lorraine Beamer, spends lots of time each month scheduling lay readers, acolytes, Eucharistic ministers, and ushers. And without her, we'd all be lost trying to figure out what's going on. Our beach ministry, many of you attended this summer, the beach ministry is represented by Peter Del Sol. The acolytes, and I would also like to add a, a, a recruitment effort from Bobby, or Ricky Evans to say that we need more volunteers for acolytes, but he's responsible for making sure they're trained properly. Deacon Pam, also on Sunday, takes uh, communion and services to assisted living residents at the Terabella 
facility, which I know she spends a lot, a lot of time getting ready for. Our communicator is Bobby Fuchs, and she's responsible for ascertaining that all, everything that's said and all the assignments are made are properly documented and prepared for everyone to read. And finally, ushers. And, and as usher chairman, or usher chairman, usher captain, I'm uh, very proud to represent them. They do a lot of good work. As you can see, when you come to a service, much of what you see and hear in the sanctuary is offered to you by the worship board. In this season of stewardship, if you feel the need to find an opportunity to offer your talents and time to serve your church, please consider all the opportunities available in the worship board. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, 
Father almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. Be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. There, guys. What? <laughs> the last two verses. Really? Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Uh, all right. I'll see you later. Okay. I gotta get this door. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. And, and uh, the, the results are outstanding. Yes. Good morning, Karen. How, oh, look at you. Okay, I got my last one this week. We're seeing the same occupational therapist. <laughs> Hi, how are you, Bernie? Doing well. Good. We'd love to have you back. Uh, thanks, Wayne. Good morning. How are the Williams? Absolutely. <laughs> it's good to see you. Good morning, Al. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, good, good. How things going? Good. Are you warm enough? Yes. Okay. All right. Are you? School going well? Good. All right. We miss you anytime. Okay. All right. our mantra. <laughs> That's what Muriel tells me every week. Stay up.